when you're assessing a, neuro, uh, a neurological patient, then I would commend to you to go through a neurological exam sheet, um, which makes life a lot easier. There are many online, and this is the sort of one that, that I use. But for assessing spinal cord disease, then by far the most useful bit is the very first bit, assessing the gait and, um, and the, the posture of the animal. Um, and really, I get more information from, um, from that than I do with any kind of hands-on. So I'm obviously in a fortunate situation of having a longer consult time. Um, and, uh, um, and we've all had to adapt our practice during COVID. But I found that actually during COVID, it somewhat makes my life easier because I'm having to examine the dogs um, outside a lot. And so I, I just basically take the dogs for a walk if I can. I can't take the cats for a walk, which is a challenge in itself. But in, with cats, I will spend uh, a while letting them walk around the consulting room if I can't, if I can. Um, if I can't do that, then I will admit the cat, let it calm down a little bit, and then perhaps try and let it walk around later. Uh, because we all know how difficult it is getting a cat to walk around your consulting room when you've got a 10 minute consult. It just, you know, it's, it, it, it's just too much to expect. Um, in those cases, I'll say to the owner, if I can, can you leave your cat with us? Um, and we'll just do a more detailed exam later. So take your time with that. So the main sort of things you see with spinal cord disease is paraparesis, um, when you have um, a lesion that's between the T3 and, um, well, T3 downwards, as you can see in this little pusscat here. I'm just going to move on to the next one. But we also see tetraparesis, and this is the most important difference differential when you have um, uh, an animal that's weak in all four limbs. You see this little puss cat here. It's got an odd facial expression, I think you'll agree. Um, you can see that it's walking very abnormally, mouth open, tongue is protruded. See that meerkat cat posture there? That's really very characteristic of a weak cat that is neuromuscularly weak. So this cat doesn't have spinal cord disease. It has neuromuscular disease, and that is the big pretender for um, uh, spinal cord disease. Um, we all, um, as vets, tend to concentrate on the central nervous system and forget about the peripheral nervous system and, um, and, the, um, and muscles. So just bear that in mind, that not all cases of weak animals are actually um, got spinal cord disease and you may need to rule out neuropathy as well. Just going back th th to the next one, then we have um, there. hemiparesis. One of the hallmarks of, of spinal cord disease is often that they're asymmetrical. Now you can see this dog is very tetraparetic, but you can obviously see that one side is worse than, um, than the other. And so uh, one of the hallmarks of neuromuscular disease is often very symmetrical.